Hey there, Postal here. So today we're going to take a look at the Martin Baker MB5. This was the plane that you could earn for the Hearts of Griffin missions in World of Warplanes. This is a Tier 7 British fighter. Let's take a quick look. Alright, so I kind of mentioned just uh, offhandedly that it looks like a mixture between a Seafang and a Spitfire and a Mustang. And there's some truisms to that. Just on paper, let's take a quick look and compare this particular plane. The guns are the same four 20mm cannons, the Hispanos, that you would get on a Tier 6 fighter. The uh, Mustang M... no, the Mustang 1A, excuse me. Same exact guns. Same distance, same damage, 360 cumulative damage per second, 200, excuse me, 2,231 feet range. Uh, so what is that going to be? It's going to be about 700 meters, I suppose, uh, if I'm doing any kind of metering math. Uh, but it's a little disappointing just on paper, uh, having tier six guns. Uh, they're actually a little bit worse than the guns on the Tornado, which is a tier six multi-role fighter. I know a couple people have a uh, told me compared this to a Meteor as far as the guns are concerned, but a couple huge differences between the guns on the, um, excuse me, on the MB5 and on the tier seven British jet that uses four Hispanos. First difference is gonna be what well, just does more damage, 100 more damage per second. That's not insignificant. That is a decent amount. The other difference is there's a decent amount more range, 250 more feet, again, not insignificant. And furthermore, and in my opinion, probably the, the most impactful is these cannons are all centrally located. So a combination of having centrally located on the cowling, longer range and more damage, the Meteor's guns are significantly better all in all. The guns on the MB5 are on the wing, just like, you know, most tier well, yeah, most, most of the British guns tend to be, actually, from Tier 9 down, really. Uh, so that can, you know, have some issues for sure. As far as the on-paper dynamics of this particular plane are concerned, there are a lot of similarities between this and a Spitfire. You'll notice that the maneuverability and the altitude performance even on just a st st standard Spitfire 9, uh, which is probably my least favorite Tier 7 fighter, the maneuverability and altitude performance is slightly better than the MB-5. The airspeed is slightly worse, and the gun armament is slightly worse, uh, but, uh, you know, basically the same. Now don't get me wrong, the 20mm cannons on this plane, if they're like the Tornado, which they're exactly like the Tornado, are going to hit hard enough, at least do critical damage. I'm just afraid if you're getting into Tier 8 battles that 360 damage per second is just going to take a while to get to it. But that being said, it's close enough to a Spitfire that I'm going to build this like I would a Spitfire, like I would the Spitfire 16, which I wasn't overly fond of either. But again, at least we've got four 20mm cannons on this particular plane. That's definitely a good thing. It is certainly going to be outclassed by things like the Ki-84, I think, that has better altitude performance, has two 30mm cannons and two 20mm cannons, has better maneuverability, just a better plane all in all. Uh, but this one's not premium, so you're not earning those extra credits with it. Very, It's actually on paper better than this Lag 7, uh, excuse me, Lavochkin 7. Uh, you've got slightly better maneuver, slightly better all stats, even the gun armament. However, the gun armament on this plane is again centrally located and you've got better range with the guns. We're going to hope this is a good plane, um, at least good enough. It's tier 7, so even like I said with the Spitfire 16, which I feel was like a year ago at this point, tier 7, there's 25 missions, it's not the end of the world, you can get that done in a 30 day time frame, and you get a free tier 7 premium plane. It might not necessarily be the best on paper, but let's see what it looks like in game. As far as my equipment setup is going to be concerned, I want to have these cannons doing the damage they can do. There's a perk to being tier 7 in equipment selection. We don't have a lot of equipment selection, so it's really going to make it quick and easy for us. We're going to go with the sight. We, again, want to get the cannons hitting as, as much as possible. We're just going to take something that we've got lying on the shelf. For this plane, I'm going to go with lightweight wing frame for my first equipment slot because, again, I'm, going, I'm building this as if it was a poor man's Spitfire. As far as maneuverability is concerned, as far as the cannons are concerned, it should be a little bit better than the, the Spitfire. 
And I'm going to go with lightweight power unit again, building, leaning in on the maneuverability that this plane is going to really survive by. Its altitude performance is scary bad, <laughs> um, which again just kind of shows you that the Spitfire 9 isn't all that good with altitude performance. When you can be in something like a Ki 84 that has significantly better altitude performance and better maneuverability, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's going on here? You would think. Better maneuverability would mean worse altitude performance, but it doesn't quite add up that way with the Key 84. With consumables, I'm going to go ahead and get my first aid package here. I want to put my pilot back in as soon as possible. I'm not sure if this plane catches on fire very often. It's British, so it probably doesn't catch on fire all that often. But if it does, I'm going to train my pilot to be a firefighter. I'm not going to waste my consumable slot on a fire extinguisher. As far as the airframe consumable is concerned, I'm going to use pneumatic control assist for those dogfights that I really need to outmaneuver somebody on. For my engine consumable, I'm kind of worried. We've got a dual propeller engine here and these types of engines tend to get knocked out pretty often. Considering I get eight seconds worth of boost, typically I'd love to have engine cooling on here rather than a, a manual engine restart, but I'm gonna do the manual engine restart just to test that out. If my engine doesn't get knocked out very often, I will definitely trade it out for the engine cooling. And universal ammo, cause why not? Let's go ahead and apply that. And we'll see, is there any special paints for this bad boy? Whoa. <laughs> okay. 5% uh, aircraft experience. It's always really frustrating when they the option is 5% aircraft experience on a premium plane. It should be 20% crew experience. Why do I say that? Because 20% crew experience is a, a used option. 5% aircraft experience on this plane or any premium plane just means 5% crew experience. There's no reason to put it towards the aircraft experience. The aircraft is already fully maxed out. And so your experience is just gonna be going towards your pilot. So it's 5% crew experience, and you're really basically losing it on 15% crew experience. Although this paint scheme is better than the Spitfire 16s, it's still pretty gaudy. And for me, who happens to have a few million lying around, I'm gonna go ahead and put the paint that's going to give me 20% concealment and better tolerance from AA guns and rear gunners. And man, this paint is so much freaking better looking too. Oh my goodness, it's so much better looking. <laughs> I mean, look, it's actually, it's actually relatively pretty. Cool, so we're applying the paint. Let's hop into a battle and see what we get ourselves stuck in with. I'm going to put my Swift Pilot on here, which is my pilot. You might not necessarily have a pilot that has 11 points, but I do. So I'm using my best British pilot. Let's go. All right, let's see how this goes. At least it, at least the paint scheme looks good. All right, uh, we're in a tier eight battle. Um, P-51H on the enemy team, an F-4U-4. So I can outmaneuver those boys. An LA-7. We're good. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, let's just go over to the garrison, garrisons win games, right? So let's go over here and just test out the plane. Tornado guns on a wannabe Spitfire frame. I mean, all in all, it could, ugh, could be okay. See, this is what I'm afraid of. Tier 8 damage output is not going to be my favorite. And you would think with, with a freaking dual propeller, we'd get more boost. What is 8 seconds worth of boost? What is this? Alright. Um, let's head over to the center. That's where the big fight's going to be. They've already got a lot of people on the way there. Their bombers captured a garrison for some reason. Uh, let's go get this key 93. 
At least the key 93 is tier 7. Ugh, blinding sun. Almost got rammed by my friendly. Hey, Jimmy. How are you doing? Please don't hit me with your 37 millimeter cannons. Jimmy doesn't want to play. Let's go. Let's go against the fighter. I think I'm gonna have more. Uh, oh, making lots of sparklies, but no damage done. There we go. Ooh, this might not be good. Okay, good. Here. Gotta remember, like when you're in the tornado, aim a little bit further out because your guns are so far out on the wings here. Especially when they're turning, make sure you give it a, quite a decent amount of lead. Short, short range on the wings can be a little awkward. I mean, they're doing crits. It's all you can ask for, I guess, from 20 millimeter cannons. Ugh, who's behind me? Somebody's behind me. All right, engine got knocked out. Cool. I like when I prepare for those things. Okay, so I can't outmaneuver a freaking zero here. But if I can get some damage done to him, yes. Toasty. Disco Inferno going on there. Heading to the center. All right, our P-51H needs to die. I hate to say that because the P-51H is such a pretty plane. Such a pretty bird. Nobody's near me. This is where I wish I had the extra boost. Ow, 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 ow. How is it this plane can't take a hit? I know it's a light fighter, but give me a break. Thank goodness we capture this sector. Holy cow. Freaking AA was going to tear me up. Now can we defend this sector without dying? That's the big, the big question. Mm. All things being equal, do we just hang out here? Don't normally like the idea of just hanging out, right? We want to try to capture some stuff. But I don't really have any reason to leave. Got some decent reasons to stay. We don't want to lose this sector. 20 millimeter cannons are overheating. Heavy fighter inbound. It's that key 93. He loves me. Gotta remember, act like I'm in a tornado, right? Just tap, tap, tap. Can't hold him down, except at the very end there. You hold them down, they will overheat. Got Nakamatsu, all right. Oh, I was afraid he was gonna. <laughs> yep, he did the thing I was afraid he was gonna do. Although luckily he didn't do it right away. Cool. Um, who that? Ooh, there's our P51H friend. How are you doing? Ah. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, the AA guns got him. Anti-aircraft. They are anti-aircraft. All right, we're going to win this battle almost certainly at this point. So let's go and see about capturing, putting some more pressure on this garrison. Maybe. Maybe I won't leave the sector. What are you? Oh, that Key 93, I'm afraid, is going to snipe me. That big old stupid cannon of his. But he didn't, so it's okay. 
The lack of speed on this plane is a little bit infuriating, but again, you know, what do you what do you expect? Yep, that's exactly who I assumed it was gonna be. Is he using pneumatic control assist? Doesn't seem like it. I'm just able to outmaneuver him. And I knocked out his wing, so I can definitely outmaneuver him now. We got all plants. Ow. I would say that guy should thank me for killing him before Squall Line, but I mean, we got both plants now, so we're about to win the game. GG. Not a bad first battle in the plane. It's basically what I assumed it was going to be. Let's take a look at a second battle. All right, so second battle. Uh, ooh, we're in tier seven battle. Specialized BF 109G though. Um, I even specialized for s turn. He can't out turn me, so that's good. But I mean, he can out speed and out altitude me all day. And I don't think I've got the survivability to take on a B32. So we're not going to. And let me say hi to people. And, um, yeah, so what we need to do is go to the command centers here, try to be relevant there. That B-32, man, is going to capture sectors like it's nobody's business. So hopefully we can get some help here, get this thing captured ASAP. Hate that I got an H on my nose. P40, stop it. I'm still kind of hesitant to keep the engine, manual engine restart on here. I needed it once in the first battle. And. What the heck was going on my face? And I just don't feel like I got a lot of uh, benefit out of it. We'll see if we if we use it again this battle, then I'll keep it. Um, but if I don't, then I won't. Sounds about right, right? Cool. Are we in agreement? Oh, I don't need to mess with the B32, and he's going out of the zone. I figured he'd be going for the mining facilities, but what do I know? So the guns are heating just like they would on a tornado. See, I'm at a boost all the time because I got fat fingers that just keep pushing the freaking W key. And I know that, but I still do it anyway because speed. Unadulterated speed is always good. But it's adulterated because I don't have enough. That makes sense. That's a word. That's a thing. Anywho. Okay. Get rid of this guy, we can get command centers. Come on, come on. Massage him to death. Um, Alright, so let's try to get, I mean, this plane doesn't have good altitude, but it's got something, so let's go get this P-47. We need to watch out for that BF-109F. Again, I can outmaneuver everybody in this particular battle. There's no zeros. There's no no Japanese fighters, I guess I should say. There's no Spitfire nines or Spitfire sixteens. Okay, just making sure he wasn't coming for me. this sector a little bit. Oh wow, we're actually kind of steamrolling on the uh, B-32 is not capturing the sectors as quickly as I'm sure he would like to be. Again, maybe he's not getting the support that he'd be entitled to. He's getting freaking personal points like it's nobody's business. 
Kill secure. Um, I might just hang out here in the center again. I got no read. Like, what am I going to go do? Capture a mining facility? I could go get that um, command center. That might be my best bet. Don't want to necessarily rest on your laurels or whatever the freaking phrase is. Mm, yeah, let's go cap that. Let's go capture, capture it. Because they're going to capture that, that B-32 is going for the command center again. Once they got both command centers, it's going to be trouble. Can we get that? Got bombers and GAs down there. That's a good thing. If I can get some help over here, that'll be a Because I can't capture the sector just by killing the defense aircraft. And some ground damage needs to be done, or a, an enemy aircraft needs to come over here for me to kill. Got another Akamatsu. All right. But I mean, fighters, light fighters have always been my shtick, so. Come on, move a little bit. Yeah, so like the, the thing with, so yeah, you've got four 20 millimeter cannons here, but if I had the four tw two 20 millimeters and two machine guns on a Spitfire, then at least I'd be able to like just hold down the trigger and do some machine gun damage even when my 20 millimeter cannons over. Freaking goofball stuff. I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's head back to the center. I can capture the center. I was going to try to... Uh, if I could kill that ship... Normally I wouldn't be shooting at the ground. But if I could kill that ship, we could have captured that sector. But then a friendly died in the sector and they got more capture points out of it. So it was like... Uh, exercise in futility. Alright, so... Let's try to put my... Light fighter pilot skills to good use here. Let's start owning the skies here. Tap, tap, tap. Yep, that bomber is starting to snowball. And that wasn't tap, tap, tapping properly. There we go. Got the airfield back. God dang it. I don't think we're going to win this. My team can't capture... <laughs> team can't capture this uh, command center. And my bullets don't seem to be doing anything to this guy. Here we go. seen anybody on the enemy team in a while. But I mean, if they're going to let me do my thing, then so be it. No, victory's not close, dude. Don't you see? I know, I know, but I gotta capture this first, hombre. Keep clicking over there. I can't be everywhere. Here we go. Do I need to go over there? Why are you clicking that? You're just being a turd? Does seem like that. Yeah, okay, so he's just being a turd. I can get this guy if he's not paying attention. He's not paying attention. Is he dead? Oh man, my friendly's dead, so he's just bored and he's clicking around like a moron. Um, got an ace? Okay. I've got an ace on this potential loss.
It's okay, dude. Keep clicking. That's gonna really... Oh. Ooh. Stop paying attention to the clicker postal. I don't know what that guy's doing. I was gonna say, is he gonna crash? Um... I don't know if we're gonna win this, still. Oh, okay, so can we go over there? We're gonna win anyway, okay. I'm totally reporting this Cracker Jack though, holy cow. Um, I don't even know. What do we do? Being an asshole? Is that a, is that a thing? Provocation, he provokes me. Look, I couldn't even focus on this ridiculously good stuff. <laughs> it was a good battle. But I'm wondering, like, would I not have been able to do that in various other planes? I don't know. Let's take a look at the battles. <laughs> to talk about doing the uh, pilot experience, and I don't even do it. So you can tell this was my first battle. 14 kills there, 12,000 personal points. A decent amount of capture points, but a lot of that was obviously defending points because we only captured two sectors. Uh, and as far as the first battle goes, I mean, the plane was basically what I assumed it was going to be. Tornado mashed up with a Spitfire. Would I rather be in a Spitfire? I don't know. I'd probably rather be in a tornado though, because at least you're at tier six. <laughs> and you just get that tier five through tier seven spread instead of tier eight. But all in all, not a, you know, not a bad plane. Let's take a look at the second battle. All right, and so for that second battle, we got 22 kills, four sectors captured. Really had to capture the sectors there. Yeah, B-32 took a little while to get going, but once he did, uh, it was it was trouble. Almost uh, almost failed there. The MB-5, take it with a grain of salt, sand, what's the phrase? I feel like I'm out of phrases uh, for this video. I'm particularly good at fighters, right? So let's let's go with that, first and foremost. So let's not go, oh, wow, Postal played two battles in this plane in his first two battles like went really well heck he got an ace what this plane is is tornado guns on wannabe spitfire airframe in a 1v1 versus a spitfire they've got the advantage because you're not going to outspeed them not by enough and they're going to have enough maneuverability and altitude performance to dictate the battle now that being said that's just the two planes if the Spitfire pilot's a below average Spitfire pilot and you're an above average fighter pilot, okay, you're probably gonna come out on top. But I just want that to be known. The airframe itself is better on the Spitfire on paper. Um, and, and arguably the guns are better. Just as I mentioned, the two 20 millimeter cannons that you get on a Spitfire, Fort, uh, Spitfire 9 have longer range and you get two 50 cal, 50 cal machine guns that don't overheat very quickly. And so, yeah, you might not necessarily be putting out as much damage in that burst, but in the long run, I, I think you'll actually do more damage with these guns on the Spitfire 9 or the Spitfire 16 than you would with the MB-5. That being said, because they're shorter range on the MB-5, you've, you know, you're gonna, Hit them and, and that's going to be it, right? Use your maneuverability and tap, tap, tap those guns. I didn't run into anybody that gave me any trouble, right? I really didn't. These two battles were, hey, welcome back to playing. Postal will, we'll, you know, uh, you'll avoid anything that can really hurt you. I didn't have to deal with any heavy fighters that were booming and zoomed against me. Not consistently. I didn't have to deal with any turn fighters that can outturn me. Because um, that's really where this plane is going to struggle. You run into a Ki-84, you run into an A7M, you run into a Yak, well, Yak-15 or a Yak-3, all those things that can really outturn you. You're going to have some super struggles in this plane because you're not going to be able to outspeed them. You're not going to be able to out-altitude out, out them. And so, yeah. But that's the same struggle that you have in a Spitfire 9. If you like the Spitfire 9, you very well may like this plane. Just be really, really mindful of the fact that the damage output is 
mediocre at best. Although, overall at tier 7, there's not a whole lot of damage output, so that's that. But it's on par with a tier 6 multi-role fighter. It's not a bad plane, but it's not a game changer either. I've had fun in it. Eventually, I will see what it's like when I'm against somebody that's picking on me in their 262. Or really taking me to the woodshed in their A7M. Uh, we'll find out in the future at some point, but you know these first two battles put it in a good, good enough light. And I'm used to the tornado. I'm used to the Spitfire. So for me, it's very easy to slip into this plane and understand what I needed to do to come out on top in my engagements. That's my recommendation for you. As simple as possible. If you've flown the tornado, if you've flown the Spitfire, you know how to play this plane. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed this really quick assessment on the MB5. Take your time. Don't stress out about the, the missions. And there's 25 of them. You'll get to them. You know, some of them just take a long time doing a million ground damage uh, or doing, a you know, 100,000 air damage. Like, don't stress out about it. Do your dailies. Do your normal stuff. Get it knocked out. And, you know, try your best. That's all you can ask for. Hope you enjoyed this particular video. And, well, I'll see you in the next one. I hope you have a great day. Bye.